Hello everybody and welcome to making a level 1 math video using Keynote. Now I'm assuming you have already watched my introduction to Keynote and today we'll be taking those skills and applying them to building a math lesson. So here I have, I just opened a Keynote presentation and I'm going to start by getting rid of everything on the slide. And I want to start by making my slides look a little bit nicer so the video comes across as a little bit more professional. Now the way I can do this easily is when there's nothing on my slide, under the Format tab, we're going to edit this master slide. And a master slide is going to be a background. Anytime you add a new slide, this is how it's going to be formatted. So I scroll down and I like to work with blank slides. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the color of the fill. So instead of the background being white, let's select this color wheel and let's make it a gentle gray, just something like this. So that's already a little bit better. It's a little bit more interesting, but we can make this a lot better. Let's go and then add a shape. And I'm going to add this rounded rectangle right here. So we'll bring that rectangle up to the corner and let's extend it so it covers most of the screen. And let's get it all centered. Now, I don't want this in black, so I'm going to change the fill color and I'm going to make it pure white. And then I want to give this a three dimensional pop. So I'm going to take that white rounded rectangle and adjust the shadow. So I'm going to pick one of these shadows and it's not super important which one you pick, but you just want to add a little bit of a shadow to it. And then you could drag some of these bars. So I'm going to up my opacity and up my blur and Let's up the blur a little bit more. That's just going to give me a nice kind of three dimensional look as a background for my slides. Now, when I click done, you're not going to notice any difference right now because what we edited was the master slide for a blank slide. So what we need to do is come and add a slide and make sure it's one of those blank slides. And now you can see that this slide has that formatting we just set up. And if we add a new slide, it will also have that formatting. And so we can have this be consistent for every slide we create. And so now let's get to work. And today we're going to work on the problem uh, 24 plus 35. And so I'm going to start by adding a text box and I'll write out my problem. What is 24 plus 35 equal? Or let's do what does 24 plus 35 equal? Now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So under the text header, I'm going to come down and let's make this size 100 font. I'm going to change the font, get it so it's looking all nice. And let's center that right near the top of our page. Perfect. So now we're going to write out and solve this problem using long addition. So we're going to write the numbers on top of each other. So let's add a text box. And I'm going to write the number 24 as two pieces. I'm going to have the two tens and the four ones be separate text boxes. And you'll see why later. So I'm going to have my two, and then I'm going to have my four. And what I'm going to do is let's make those a nice size. So I'll highlight them. And under the text section, let's make these size 200. I'm going to change their font, make them bold, just make them look a little nicer, and then get those centered. Now, instead of having to do that formatting every time, I'm just going to take these numbers, copy and paste them, and now I can drag them right below, same exact formatting, and we'll make that the number 35. I can do the same thing to make my plus symbol, so I'm just going to copy one of these, drag it to the side, and make it a plus. Now let's draw that line underneath our problem. So we'll add a shape and we'll add a line. Let's straighten that out and put it in place. And I think this will look a little bit better if this line is proportional in size to the actual numbers themselves. So I'm going to make it thicker. Instead of two points, let's do 15, or maybe that's a little big. Let's do 12. Perfect. And now I'm going to put in the answer for my problem. So again, I'll just copy the digits. And of course, we know the answer 4 plus 5 would be 9, and 2 plus 3 would be 5. All right. So we can take a look at this. We can get everything nice and centered, make sure it's looking good. 
But one thing, we might decide, hey, let's use colors to make this a little bit clearer. So what if we make the number 24? Let's change those text colors. So under the text tab, let's change the color. Let's make that red. And you know, we can do that in our initial problem. We'll just highlight 24 and make it red. We can do the same thing with 35. Let's turn it a different color. Let's do blue. And we'll highlight the 35, make it blue. Alrighty. So our problem is looking pretty good. But if we were to play through this, there is no movement on this slide. And so let's build the movement by animating this presentation. So the problem will appear. And then I want to show the students that I would write out 24 as if I were writing on a whiteboard. So I'm going to animate this. And I'm going to build in 24. I'm going to make these appear with a scale uh, animation. That's my favorite. And I like to build them in in 0.3 seconds with a little bounce. Next thing I'll draw in is my plus symbol. So I'll animate that using the same effect. So scale, 0.3, let's do a bounce. And then we'll draw in 35, same animations. Scale, 0.3 seconds with a bounce. Next thing I would do is draw in this line. Now I'm gonna draw it in actually as if I were drawing on a whiteboard. And to do that, I can use the line draw effect. You can see a little bit what that would look like. So let's use that line draw. Let's speed it up so it only takes about three quarters of a second. And that looks pretty good. Now, let's give this a preview and see how it looks. Hmm. So one thing you might notice is the order seems a little bit weird. We want students to not see the four and then the two and then the plus and then the three and then the five. We want it to be more connected. And so we're going to change the order of these animations. And so let's come down to build order. And here we can see the order of our different animations. Right now, first is going to be the four, then the two. But I actually want the two and the four to happen at the same time. So I'm actually going to put two and the four just so it reads like 24. And then I'm going to make it so that this four appears at the same moment as the two. I'm going to connect those animations. I'll do that by selecting the four and change it from on click to with the last build. Now you can see 24, it's all connected as a single animation. I'm going to do the same thing with a 35. So instead of a three and then a five, let's take the five and connect it with that previous animation so that 24 and 35 are connected. Let's see what that looks like now. So now we draw out our 24, our plus symbol, our 35, and we draw our line. Nice. So now the next thing is how would we actually go about solving this for a student? Well, what you would probably do on a whiteboard is show them that you're going to look at this four ones and five ones and add them together. You want students to be focusing on the four ones plus five ones. And we can do that using an animation. So we're going to highlight both the four and the five. And we're going to animate them not with a build in, but with an action. Just to draw students' attention to these numbers as we add them. So let's add an effect. And I like the pop effect. You can see it's going to give them a little bit of a pop. So we'll go ahead and add that. And I like to make the pop really big. So not 120, let's make it 200%. And so now, let's see, uh, after we add four and five, we get our answer of nine. And that's when I would write nine onto the whiteboard. So it's not until after I do four plus five, and then I'm gonna write down nine. So now at this point, I'm gonna add in my nine. I'll build it in using that same scale effect as all of the other digits. So 0.3 seconds, add a bounce. And now let's see what it looks like. So we've got 24 plus 35. We draw our line. And then 4 plus 5 is 9. Great. Let's repeat that process with our tens place now. So we're going to highlight the 2 and the 3. And we're going to add an action. 
We're going to do that same action, so a pop animation. And I'm going to make it bigger, so not 120, but 200%. After we do think to ourselves, 2 plus 3. Well, as a teacher, that's when I would write the 5 on the whiteboard. So let's write that in. Let's build it in using our scale animation. 0.3 seconds out of bounds. Let's see what this looks like. 24 plus 35 equals, well, 4 plus 5, that's 9. And 2 plus 3, that's 5. All right. That looks pretty good. We've walked students through this problem. And uh, that's about all we need to do. Now, I imagine in a real lesson, you want to give students multiple chances to succeed. And rather than having to recreate this entire slide and all of the work you put into it, let's just copy it and reuse most of that work. So I'm going to click on that slide in the left-hand side, copy it, and then paste it. So now I have two slides that are exactly the same. In this second slide, let's come up with a new problem. So not 24 plus 35. Let's do, how about 12 plus 57? OK. Well, now, instead of 24, I'll just change it to 12. Instead of 35, I just change it to 57. And 2 plus 7, well, that's still 9. 1 plus 5, that's 6. And just like that, all of the animations we can see are still here. And so that took about 30 seconds. But now if we play through this slide, 12 plus 57, we can solve that. 2 plus 7 is 9. 1 plus 5 is 6. And so you see how quick it was once we build that first slide. We can reuse all of the work and all of those animations for our future lessons or future problems. We can make another one. Let's do 25 plus uh, 33. It's a simple 25, 33. 5 plus 3 is 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. And just like that, we now have three problems that we could demonstrate with students. To turn this into a video, we're just going to record this as a slideshow. We'll walk through and click through the anima animations as we explain to students what to do. And when we finish, just export that file as a movie, and you have an amazing video lesson ready for your students to watch and learn from.